My good friend TB Joshua, reported by another Yoruba junk gutter media, why Nigeria will not break up. TB Joshua releases prophecy. You've been releasing this prophecy every place of the year. The more you release, the more Yoruba people you have in refugee camps in the Republic. The more you release, the more towns have been taken over by a foreign terrorist from the Sahel. You're not even ashamed of your they behave like like harlots, you know, like prostitutes. They have no you know, they are different. You have no shame. You people, you have they, these people. They, how can you proclaim you're a pastor and you have no single shame? Every year you release prophecy. It never comes to pass. You're still releasing prophecies. Chai, have no shame. Honestly speaking. Why uh, uh, once a political class, Nigeria will not disintegrate, and then when it does, anybody who goes to TB Joshua Church after Niger after the zoo called Nigeria is broken into pieces, then you know you are worse than an animal. You are a fool. God is about to disgrace TB Joshua because the zoo will break. The zoo must fall. It's written in heaven. The, zoo, the what I'm telling you, as they preaching since the year 2012, that the zoo must fall, and it's, it's collapsing before your eyes that you may see it, not behind your back, before your eyes. You you cage poor people with your perverse doctrine and and in idiotic, unfulfillable prophecies. Every year prophecy, every year prophecy, every year prophecy. None of them comes to pass. Not absolutely none. I told you how many months ago I, they will come to the east. Their land will be taken over by criminals. Is it not happening? Is, is, that, is that what I'm telling you now? Is it in the Guardian newspaper? So other pastors are not so popular. It's only your own that is popular. Oh dear me. Open his yoke with Chineke. TB Joshua, were you a Christian? Were you born a Christian? Because fake <laughs> fake prophets are, are somebody wrote are products of a decayed Nigeria. That is why you are stinkingly rich at the expense of your poverty stricken followers. You have a private jet. Yet people in your congregation they don't have any. Because you people are fake. You people are fake. You are a Muslim. TB Joshua, you are a Muslim with other people, all these mega commercial pastors in Yoruba land. You are all Muslims before, weren't you? I have nothing against Islam. As I said, when I was in detention, I read the Quran. I have nothing against Islam. No, absolutely nothing. Uh, not all these mad people all over the place claiming they are fighting for Islam or Allah or whatever and, and, and doing all their rubbish. I, I'm not against Islam. All of you were Muslims before. All of you were Muslims before. Am I, am I saying the truth or not? All of you were Muslims before. <laughs> Today you, you have private jets courtesy of the idiocy of those that call themselves Christians. <laughs> Do you people are the problems facing ordinary people in Nigeria. But I blame all of you that go to their con shop <laughs> every every Monday, Wednesday, uh, Saturday, Sunday to give them tithes and offerings. If you argue that Nigeria should be won, then you are questioning the reason why God allowed the Israelites to leave Egypt. Because if there were TB Joshua and all these fake criminal pastors, then they would have been saying to Pharaoh, Oh, don't worry, let us be one. We need their labor, we need their cheap labor. They must be here. That means that you're saying that the word of God cannot come to pass because you're benefiting because you are criminals. I want to ask TB Joshua a question this evening and all the other criminal pastors you have all over the zoo, not just in Yoruba and all over the place, there are criminals everywhere masquerading as men of God. I want to ask them a very simple question. A very, very simple question this evening. I want to prove to all of you that these pastors, that they are fake. I want to prove to all of you that these people, they, they worship Lucifer. They don't worship Almighty Living God in heaven. I want to prove it to you. With the Bible, I'm not going too far. 
<laughs> I think there was a place in the scriptures where it says, do not add, do not subtract. No, I won't add anything. I will give you the literal meaning of what I'm about to present to you tonight. I must give you this very message. I want to remind T.B. Joshua about the scriptures he claims. Of course, he said he was a Muslim before. Maybe he didn't quite read uh, the whole scripture. Should I say the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation? He maybe he didn't have time to read it. He just wanted to make money. By talking rubbish every blessed day. I feel sorry for you people. I want to refer T.B. Joshua and all the other criminal pastors against freedom for Yoruba people. I want to refer you to Genesis chapter 13 from verse 5 to 13 genesis 30 those of you if your bible is closed i will say i call it torah is the old testament go and pick up your torah the old testament please and open it up genesis chapter 13 and i'll read for you abraham then called abraham and lot they separated these are blood relatives Abraham and Lot, because I believe that Lot was the child of the sister of Abraham. Uh, why did they separate? Um, I want to now lecture TB Joshua on what the scripture says and all these other fake pastors that you have talking rubbish about Yoruba agitation and freedom. All of you idiots talking about one Nigeria. I want to educate you with the Bible. Because every answer on this earth to every problem you can find it in the scriptures. Now, listen very carefully this evening, please. Abraham separated with Lot. Why? As a result of a quarrel. They were quarreling. The same way that everybody is now quarreling in the zoo, there was a quarrel. Then, I want all pastors to listen, please. There was a quarrel. At the beginning of this very story, Lot was described as a very wealthy man. Like Abraham. The Abraham was in Egypt for a while, then came back to the land of Canaan. Not Canaan, but Canaan, that's the proper name. Abraham offered Lot, his relative, instead of us to fight, let us separate. But what is so shocking is the reason why they were fighting in the first place. That is why I said to people that hey, your pastors don't know what they're talking about most times, or most of them. When I tell you the reason why Lot separated from Abraham, you will not believe it. It is happening in Nigeria today. What is that thing? <laughs> and now read verbatim what the word of God says, the Bible. Or should I say the Torah? And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks, flocks, uh, and herds, cattle, nama, and uh, ram and, and cattle. Listen carefully. And tents. Uh, verse 6 and the land was able to bear them that they might dwell together for their substance was great so that they could not dwell together in the beginning the land was very fertile like nigeria before 1960 after 1960 everything was okay all was feeding large and everything but in 1967 something happened that caused them not to dwell together anymore now, verse 7 of Genesis chapter 13, verse 7. And there was strife between the headsmen. The same headsmen you have to pay, oh, headsmen. It's in the Bible, no? What made Abraham to separate from the native is the same headsmen, the Fulani headsmen in the Bible, in the Bible. TB Joshua, are you listening? And all the other criminal pastors, are you listening? Come cousin, you, know, you don't know God. You have, uh, you know, you don't know God. <laughs> and there was strife between them. There was problem between them. I am referring all the pastors to Genesis chapter 13, verse 7. Headsmen. The same headsmen you have today in Nigeria. Headsmen. And when headsmen begin to cause trouble, the only thing to do is to divide. That is what the father of all nations taught us, Abraham. <laughs> hey, all glory will go to Elohim in heaven. There was strife between their headsmen. The headsmen of Abraham. Maybe I don't know if they are full of me or not. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Fulani headsmen belonging to Abraham and Fulani headsmen belonging to Lot. 
Do you know what they said? Uh, what I say is that even in the Holy Book, cow and headers were also a problem that led to division. Cows and headers. The same thing we have today. What are we suffering from? Cows and headers from Yediala. Terrorist group. Cows and headers. The same thing that caused Abraham to separate from the relative lot. And the Canaanite and the Perizzites dwelled then in the land. It wasn't the land of Israel. Then the Canaanites were there and the Perizzites were there. And Abraham said to Lot, let us not quarrel, please. Let there be no strife between us. I am begging you, between me and between you, between my headsmen and between your headsmen, for we are the same blood, we are the same brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Look at all this land in front of you. Please, take one, let me take one, that we may not fight anymore that we may remain good relatives this is what the bible says and abraham said to lord if you take the left hand i will go to the right if you take the right hand i will go to the left rather than us quarreling every blessed day please let us separate headsmen abraham lot in the bible separation in the bible and you're telling me that these pastors that they believe in god that they read the Bible? Are you sure they read the Bible? There was a quarrel, not fight, or not. They didn't go to war. But Abraham said, "Let us have peace. You are my brethren. Let us separate." And uh, an idiot is telling me somewhere in in in, in Lagos, uh, God said, "Nigeria should win." When there are headsmen involved, the headsmen, the same thing, the same headsmen that caused Abraham to live, Lord. I say, go your separate way. Let me go mine. What I'm telling you is what is in the Bible. I'm not, I didn't make anything up. I want to prove to you that some of these pastors championing one Nigeria, they don't read the Bible. Tomorrow they say, Abraham is father of all nations. Abraham is father of all nations. But what Abraham did, you cannot do. There was strife in the land. The headers, full of heads men, we are there then. Moving cattle. Perizzites and Canaanites. And they clashed. <laughs> it's not today that clashing started, though. They clashed then. And now, as we are clashing, Elohim said, Let there be Biafra. Full and a janja way there. Stay on your own. Stay on your own. Let my children from Biafra stay on their own. Stay on your own. Lord, take one side. Abraham, go one side. Let us uh, uh, separate in peace rather than fighting. That's what should have happened. That, I expect all these pastors to know all these things. But, uh, you know, all these uh, criminal pastors with their fake Christianity do not understand the scriptures. Neither do they have what it takes to interpret clearly what the scriptures is trying to convey to us. Some of them were Muslims before they discovered that African version of evangelical Christianity is a lucrative business. That is why they lack basic understanding of the word of God, which is clearly evident today. Because if they knew Genesis chapter 13, 5, to nine, they will not be talking rubbish about one Nigeria. Never, ever, ever. And I have a word for some of you superstitious baboons from Africa that uh, attend to these criminals and to pastors. Europe advanced to where they are today, a position of preeminence in world affairs because they challenge the doctrine and unscientific orthodoxy of the church of rome they challenge the pope do you know about the enlightenment movement founded by the medici family of florence in the medieval times are you aware of the enlightenment movement across the whole of europe when european crown heads sat together and said from today, no more superstition. We submit everything to the altar of reason. Anything that doesn't make any sense, we will not accept it.
you see an idiot that left Islam because he knew that Christianity is where to milk poor people dry without them asking questions because their reward is in heaven. <laughs> you, you, you see the trick? <laughs> Your reward is not good roads here, not good schools. No, it's in heaven. They let themselves have private jets on earth. And you go to the next week, you go, you give a hi, hey, he's a man of miracle because you are very poor, poverty stricken, black people. Do you know they no longer go to church in Europe <laughs> because they're all affluent, they're very rich in America? The same, as I said earlier, it's only blacks that go to church and shouting, screaming up and down because they're the poor people. If you go to college, they're the ones doing the cleaning, they're the lowest of the low, that's why they keep shouting every blessed day. You don't know that? Go and check now. Go to Africa. The whole of Africa is a church everywhere. The more church you build, the more poverty stricken you become. You can never learn anything from it. What does that tell you? That tells you all you need to know. Oh my goodness, man. This is to prove to all of you that claim divine knowledge of God. Some of you are complete idiots when it comes to the affairs of man because you know nothing. I feel sorry for all these stupid pastors saying that Nigeria should be won because they are, should I say, short-sighted, greedy fools using the Bible to deceive the gullible into thinking that Nigeria is sustainable. What is good about Nigeria should be sustained? Name one thing that's good about the zoo. Name one thing I'm asking you, they cannot name anything. Maybe you start an offering. They love tithes and offering, and you people idiotically you go every Sunday and you pile on the cash and they buy, keep buying new jets. Telling you Nigeria is good. Nigeria, oh, oh, God has a plan for Nigeria. So God uh, had a plan for Nigeria and he opened the borders to allow killers to come in, to be killing people. And, uh, what planet does this people actually inhabit? Anyway, it's, it's poverty. Once Biafra comes now, people will become very rich and very affluent. <laughs> and you see what will happen. People will submit themselves to reason. Not to these superstitious mumbo jumbo people talking rubbish. I, I saw something in your life. I see something in your life. Oh dear, these people. They even have eight churches in one building. Some, some will do, do service eight to ten. Or others take over ten to twelve. He says, it's something of the Holy Spirit. The Europeans sat down and saw all of this rubbish many years ago and said, this is nonsense. Let us form the Enlightenment Movement. That is why Europe is number one in the whole world. And I am bringing a curse upon every pastor who will ever open his stupid stinking mouth to talk about one Nigeria. Shame shall befall you. If shame doesn't befall you, you will not don't worship Almighty God in heaven and Him alone and no other. You not don't worship idol. I'm a Pharisee. I don't worship idol. You know that very well. Because anybody talking about one Nigeria is a child of Lucifer. If you talk about one Nigeria, you are a child of Lucifer. That means there is no God inside you. If there is God inside you, how can such a thing be happening in Nigeria now? How is that possible? How is that possible? I'm asking you. And you claim you're a child of God, you couldn't say it. Some of them claim we are children of God, we are this, we are that, we are prof uh, uh, prophets. You could not see, you couldn't have predicted. You are only coming out now to say, oh, don't worry, Nigeria will not break. Nigeria is not going to break. Now the camera cannot break Nigeria. Someday we cannot break Nigeria. Did I tell I was going to break Nigeria? God will destroy Nigeria because his glory cannot be taken by man. Some of these stupid idiotic prophets oh, claim they are prophets. They're like Pharaoh. They're even worse than Pharaoh. They read the Bible. They claim they are, they, are, they are Bible scholars. They read the Bible. But they don't understand what the Bible is talking about. Because they worship the God of mammon, the God of money. Tithes and offerings, that's all they're interested in. Private jets and flashy cars. They're not even ashamed. Do you know, as the leader of IPOB, I am ashamed to drive a car. Do you know why I'm ashamed to drive a car? 
because people are contributing money towards a project of this magnitude. When I have a car, when people give me a car, I begin to feel ashamed of myself that I'm driving a car. Even when you buy jet, you're not even ashamed of yourselves. You are not even ashamed that the poor people who are contributing this money, they are contributing it because thinking they will go to heaven, thinking you pray for them, there will be a miracle. If you people claim there is a miracle, pray for a miracle not to happen in Nigeria. You've been praying for many years. The more churches you open, the more mega auditoriums you build, the more uh, tyrannites you have, the more bandits are taking over your villages. Don't you understand it? They are. Now listen. Pharaoh made the same mistake. And God will use Nigeria and Britain as an example to the whole world that their friends are his children. By the time God, the anger of God is done upon Nigeria, believe you me, oh God, if you see a girlfriend, you start running. You are about to see hell in the zoo called Nigeria. By the idiocy of Yoruba media houses, their journalists and their mega rich pastors, these three groups of people in Yoruba land, uh, my happiness today is that there are vibrant, young, energetic Yoruba men, even older ones, like Akinto, men who are vibrant, coming out to fight like men for their freedom. Ignoring the, the fools and the buffoons on the pulpit. Very wicked, avaricious men and women. All they care about is money. They claim they are, they are pastors and they are prophets, they cannot see anything. They can't even see their backside. They cannot see anything. Every year you pray for Nigeria. Every year Nigeria gets worse and you claim you're a prophet. <laughs> Every time. Okay, man, I'm a brother. Every year you're praying. Let us pray for our country. Let us pray for Nigeria now. Before you finish praying, your, your church is on fire. Bandits have taken over your village. Flanier from Sahel. Are behaving and massacring people. The next Sunday, you want, let us pray for Nigeria. Let's pray for Nigeria. You don't even, you, even God is sending you a message that the prayer points you're presenting before him, he doesn't want it, yet you cannot hear. I thank God for the Buhus, the Adams, or Ghani Adams of this world. I thank God for the Akinto years of this world and telling you the truth. Because if not for, 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 uh, for Yoruba agitators, the world will think we are mad. Why do you want to leave Nigeria? But now that Yoruba also wants to leave, Middle Belt also wants to leave, <laughs> they will now know that we are not mad anymore. That our brain is correct. You don't know that? They now know that our brain is correct. These are the things you must understand. These are the things you must follow religiously and studiously for you to appreciate the miracle that God is doing. What is happening in Nigeria now is a miracle from God in heaven. God is about to destroy Nigeria beyond recognition. You have people that claim they are the men of God lying. They are holding the Bible and they are lying. If Nigeria is meant to be good, how come things are getting worse every blessed year? Just explain that to me, please. Explain it to me. Tell me why people you claim are foreign, foreigners are in your country with AK-47 kidnapping you and you're paying ransom. You're not even ashamed of yourselves to say that Nigeria will get better anymore. How come those who are shouting every day territorial integrity, you are there and it is being breached on a daily basis and you cannot do anything. 200 million people cannot remove one corrupt terrorist minister. 200 million people and you're telling me that you're a nation, you're a country. Shame on all of you. I preach the truth, huh? I don't give a damn. God bless them. They are number one. Because they they said you see all these superstitious when when a cat flies past your house or, or you see pussy cat in the morning you 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 start speaking in tongues that your neighbor has come to get you all this idiotic this you black people ordinary pussy cat pursuing a, a, a mouse it's the, your neighbor that sent the pussy cat a tree that is in your village over a thousand years old is in your generation that the tree is now is an impediment. <laughs> and you want to be developed. <laughs> Black in this you see, you know that poverty 
You know that poverty is a evil spirit. When you are possessed by poverty, if somebody tells you to plant a seed and water it and do that, you will be paying. <laughs> poverty. You know they say Yahoo Yahoo boys eh, with the computer. There are those with the Bible. Inside mega structures. Duping people every blessed day. Think that Nigeria can be saved. Doshi. They don't know anything about the word of God. I feel sorry for these people. I'm not insulting anyone, but I have to make the facts very clear for all of you to understand. Maybe in the future, our grandchildren will save these clips and then replay them. TB Joshua has paid for me before, for your information. He's a good friend of mine, but I must preach the truth. That is why people don't understand how we do things in IPOB, because uh, uh, those I love are those that do the things I ask them to do. If you feel because I'm close to you, you can mess about it. I will expel it from the movement. If you do what I ask you to do, then you can stay with us because we are marching forward. Believe you me, we are. And your mega rich pastors. They think if Nigeria collapses, they are, where will they pack their jet? Because I know that in Yoruba land, you have savvy, intelligent young people, men and women, who are championing Oduduwa. Once Oduduwa comes, these are well led, well learned people. They will start paying taxes or packing those jets on, on the tarmac. They will start paying. They will start being controlled the same way that Charity Commission in England regulates the churches. They know. That's why you want Nigeria. We are thing uh, we are people are very, very corrupt. Where you can do whatever you like. You come out and say, hey, he's a man of God, oh, man of God. He has a 10 million auditorium. You people. You people. You people. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing anything with friendship. Oh. I'm not going to friendship. Eh? I'm not doing anything with it. If you believe in freedom for the people, you are my friend. Any day you come out and you say that Nigeria should be one, you become my mortal enemy from that very day. Because you are an idiot. Most of your satanic pastors are predicting about Nigeria being together in the future. I asked you a simple question. If I go to any of these useless churches in Nigeria, all these idiotic churches in Nigeria, I will say to you, Pastor, I have been praying for Nigeria to be better for the past 20 years. He said it's getting worse. When do you think it will get better? Yes, oh, so seed and plant, uh, water the plant, all that rubbish. Because there is poverty in the land. People can no longer reason properly. Oh, you know, whatever pastor, or, or TV Joshua, you, you acquire land very cheaply in Ogun to build a, a mega plaza or, or mega auditorium that will contain one million people to give you tithe and offering. Do you understand it? I'm sure you do. All the all the criminal pastors with their two or three jets having fun.